Good afternoon, uh, good afternoon everyone. Uh, today, I'm, um, uh, I, by the way, I'm Mustafa Salama. I'm working in Vehicle and Robotics Engineering Lab in University of Alabama, Birmingham, um, uh, under the supervision of Dr. Vladimir Vanzevich. And today I'm uh, presenting part of my research, uh, research and my PhD study under the title of the Stochastic Terrain Properties, Vehicle Interaction for Agile uh, on Main Ground Vehicle Dynamics. So the um, outline uh, will be introduction and then the dynamic model of my UGV. Uh, and then I will deal with uh, three main uh, important parts, which is the stochastic circumferential force and stochastic rolling resistance force. And then the uh, uh, linking the uh, or the interaction between the longitudinal and lateral forces, and then I will um, um, focus on the uh, energy efficiency of uh, the whole UGV. So to define the agility, uh, we can say that it's uh, it's uh, the fast response to dynamical changes in severe environments, and. Um, to make my model uh, agile, I, we, we need to develop uh, analytical fundamentals to model the interaction between the stochastic terrain parameters uh, and the UGV, and then uh, we need to know the longitudinal and lateral forces for all four wheels uh, of my UGV uh, while moving in curvilinear motion. Um, and then we need to model the, uh, the stochastic uh, parameters, as uh, the stochastic uh, behavior of the soil parameters uh, within a prob probabilistic framework, um, but this is not our focus in this work. Uh, and then we need to address the stochastic energy uh, efficiency and stochastic slip power losses uh, in the tire terrain interaction. So starting with the dynamic model, uh, this is the, uh, the uh, dynamic equations in longitudinal and lateral and the rotation around the uh, vertical uh, axis. And this is the, uh, as we know, it's the, the, the slip angles for each uh, of the four wheels. And uh, by, uh, by, do, by, uh, by checking here the, uh, the, uh, the free body diagram of uh, the UGV in general case, uh, and put the uh, equation of the longitudinal uh, uh, acceleration and the inverse dynamic formulation, I can get the total uh, circumferential force of the UGV in function of the weight of the uh, uh, of the UGV and uh, some other parameters. Uh, also here I need to mention that um, we neglect the uh, the air drag of the uh, of the UGV because of the small frontal area and the normal reaction uh, uh, I think it's very easy to to get so um, just doing um, um, uh, summation of the moments for, uh, in front and rear axles to get the first equation and then uh, by assuming that there is no shift of the normal reaction uh, due to the internal tire friction and the friction on the contact patch and then uh, we will assume for simplicity that there is, uh, we are dealing with only horizontal plane and the, also the longitudinal bulldozing resistance uh, it's acting in the same uh, plane of the contact patch. So this equation can be reduced to this equation, and by doing the same, we can get the, uh, the normal reaction for the front axle. The same we can do for, uh, to get the, uh, the left and right uh, normal reactions. And then by using the most famous equations in turn mechanics, uh, the pressure sinkage or Becker equation and shear stress displacements, uh, and by uh, modeling the, uh, the pneumatic tire as one uh, and divided to three different parts, uh, we can get the t uh, total circumferential force by integrating the horizontal component of the uh, uh, shear stress uh, over the angle uh, theta from uh, the entry angle to the exit angle. And then to the uh, terrain part, uh, we use the uh, deterministic soil parameters first from Wong for soft soil, uh, dry soil with 0% zero per zero moisture. And then uh, we found in literature that Madsen, he took this deterministic soil parameters and he used it as his mean values. And uh, in his model, he used Latin hypercube uh, method to model 
25 samples or uh, 25 values from uh, from this deterministic soil parameter. We did um, some statistical analysis to get the means or, or to get the standard deviation, uh, deviation minimum and maximum uh, for the for the whole six parameters of the uh, of the soil, and uh, then we uh, tried to uh, to to fit the distribution for uh, these parameters over uh, 1,000 samples. Uh, so we compared different fit distributions. Uh, as, as here, these two figures, uh, I'm showing, showing the, uh, the cohesion and uh, ov over the, um, the 1,000 samples. And this is the histogram of these values. And we've uh, compared different fit distributions using um, uh, maximum likelihood uh, value. And we found that the, the normal distribution, the log normal, and the gamma, uh, they are almost have the same value, so we use here the normal distribution for just for simplicity in my computation. Of course, I did this for the whole six parameters. So, uh, uh, of course, this characteristic or this uh, probabilistic characteristic can uh, uh, impact the tire slippage. And if we see here the in this wheel kinematic part, uh, we see that the um, instantaneous center of zero velocity. It it shifted from the uh, the uh, the the, um, the contact between the tire and the terrain shifted up, shifted up, uh, to up, and this means that um, the circumference of the wheel will gain uh, will gain velocity opposite to the to the direction of the motion. Uh, this means that the radius or the rolling effective radius uh, it's not constant uh, in real time, and in this case, in, uh, here I can uh, introduce the, or, or I can say that the the, the slippage is uh, the ratio between the the slip velocity and the uh, theoretical velocity of the wheel, and from here I can say that the uh, rolling effective uh, the effective rolling radius is the the linkage between the the uh, the um, vx, which is the uh, uh, the linear velocity of the center of the wheel with the uh, angular velocity of the wheel. So, um, also we calculated the uh, the uh, rolling radius in the driven mode. Uh, this means that we are not applying torque to to the wheel, and we can get it by uh, measuring the uh, the total uh, travel of the wheel over the uh, the number of of revolutions. And then we can uh, put the equation of the slip in uh, functions of the, these two radii. So uh, based on this, we measure our um, slip velocity, and we, have, we got it with this value. And to confirm this, we compare it with the uh, tangential velocity from Wong, and uh, we compare them together at uh, when theta equals 0. And we got the same two values here. So, uh, I took my uh, stochastic soil par uh, parameters and I used Monte Carlo uh, technique, which is the very simple technique to uh, to model the uh, um, or, to, or to estimate my stochastic circumferential force over the whole range of slippage. And of course, uh, uh, there is an energy we, we or we consume energy to. Uh, because of the, uh, the the rolling resistance force, and in our case, um, the uh, Rx or the total motion resistance is component of three parts: uh, the bulldozing of the soil in the front of the wheel, and the compaction the, or the soil compaction, and um, the tire flexing. Um, we got our stochastic uh, uh, resistance force, and the normal value was around uh, 33 newton. Um, and based on it, we calculated the uh, rolling friction coefficient, and we found that it's uh, around 0.29, which is in the range between 0.1 and 0.4, uh, what we found in the literature for small pneumatic tire for uh, moving on a soft soil. Also, we consider also the effect of the of number of passes of the wheels by using the uh, approach by Dr. Farben. And then the... Um, uh, 
the, the most important part is, the, uh, uh, is to link the lateral force with the uh, longitudinal forces. So to mathematically link them together, we use the nonlinear lateral slip theory developed by Dr. Antonov, uh, where the, uh, the, uh, the FL or the lateral force is a function of the cornex stiffness of the tire uh, and the slip angle. Uh, this equation can be uh, equal to the, uh, the KY node, which is the tangent of the function uh, of FL as a function of the slip angle. And uh, he introduced uh, another uh, or new term, which is uh, the product uh, of nine nonlinear correction factors. These correction factors, it corrects the lateral force slip angle uh, equation upon the change of several things, uh, as for example, the normal load or the soil properties, uh, lateral bulldozing resistance, etc. So the selection for this uh, uh, partial correction factors is depending on the, the case that you are dealing with. Uh, so in our case, we will consider only three uh, correction factors. The first one is the effect of the traction force or the, or the drawbar pull. Uh, and you will see here that changing the torque or the drive torque to the wheel uh, will change the traction force and of course it, it will change the, uh, uh, this factor. The second one is the uh, effect of the normal load redistribution. And as you see here, uh, this value uh, is the, uh, the constant normal load value that is equal to the uh, recommended wheel load. And the dynamic load in, in my real time, it will be changing around this value. It's some, it's, it will be up and down based on the, uh, the movement of my UGB. The third correction factor that we are in introducing here in this case is the lateral deflection of the soil element under the tire and the bulldozing the soil in lateral di direction, which is this correction factor and it, it's highly depending on the, the stiffness of the soil element in lateral direction. So by using these three uh, correction factor, in this, in this case, I, uh, I modeled the, the stochastic uh, Fx or the st uh, stochastic circumferential force, and the lateral force will be also uh, stochastic lateral force. Then the last part is the energy efficiency, and we need to analyze this part because uh, the, the, the second part of uh, my research, which is the uh, developing and control algorithm to control the, uh, the UGV by controlling each torque for uh, for each motor uh, or for, 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 for each wheel by minimizing the, the power losses uh, due to the slippage. So if we consider only here for just for uh, because of the time, if we consider the power balance just for straight motion, so it will be uh, we have power in and power out and we have uh, power uh, due to some losses. These losses has two subcomponents. The first one overcoming to overcome the rolling resistance forces, and the second one is the slip power. And I will focus here more on the slip power losses. So uh, I will just put it in another form, which is this will be the final form of the efficiency of the uh, power losses. And as you can see here, it, it will be a function of my circumferential forces. So by controlling these forces, I can um, uh, optimize my uh, slip efficiency. Uh, here, this figure, I just uh, show um, uh, the effect of the distribution of the uh, front and rear uh, circumferential force uh, uh, on the, the stochastic uh, slip efficiency. And, I, uh, and here we assume the symmetry between the left and right uh, side of the UGP. So the, to sum up, we here uh, analyze, um, uh, study uh, stochastic tire train interaction uh, analytically that uh, and impacts uh, that impacts the tire uh, forces in three space, and then uh, we analyze also the energy slip efficiency for the uh, for the EGV, and um, the next goal will be uh, as we said that it will be the control algorithm. Uh, we should uh, we uh, we will start uh, developing it to uh, analyze the agile uh, vehicle dynamics of the UGV.
And so here, I just finish and thank you. And uh, please feel free if you have any questions.